March 27th, 1865. March 27, 1865. President Abraham Lincoln meets with Generals Ulysses S. Grant, William Tecumseh Sherman, and Admiral David Dixon Porter aboard the River Queen in City Point, Virginia. Aboard the city, aboard the River Queen at City Point, Virginia. Abraham Lincoln, U.S. Grant, William Tecumseh Sherman, David Dixon Porter. Holy shit, what an incredible, what an incredible meeting that would have been. So it's uh, pretty incredible, March 27th, 1865. We go from there, and I just want to read a passage on this here. This is pro-America, so, you know, don't be freaked out on the swastika without noticing the American flag. This is about the liberation of Dachau, the concentration camp, the Dachau crematorium. This is about America kicking ass and taking names. But with a simple stroke of your magic wand, unknown GI of that twilight on the last Sunday in April, you changed all that. You made us suddenly understand that the world was still composed of human beings, that there were still men who were ready to give up their lives to save ours without trying to st strike a bargain, without asking anything in return, for you came to liberate American, American GI. GI Joe, you came to liberate us, not to conquer you had come to prove to us that we had been right to hope that there was still such a thing as justice, that the word liberty was not that obscenity which the SS men had had carved over the gateway to the camp, that the sacrifices of those who had perished had had some meaning. You opened a window to us on the world of our youth, a world we thought we had lost forever. Howard Zinn said that the American Revolution and World War II and the U.S. Civil War are America's three holy wars. And if you disagree with those wars, are there any wars that you think are justifiable? Because those would be the very few. That would be only... I can't think of another war offhand that I approve of or that I agreed with in American history. I'm sure there's one or two. If the Germans had suddenly taken down the fences and left us free to go, if the SS men had suddenly deserted the camp, if the Gestapo had seen us quietly and safely home one after the other, maybe our joy would have been as great, but nothing in us would have changed. It was you, unknown GI, coming from the shadowy edge of the field with your submachine gun in your hand, you carefree, brave, and daring GI who made us men, who made men of us again. In ancient times, Carrara, Marble, Pyramids might have immortalized your name. Pouches filled with diamonds or gold might have seemed to you a more tangible proof of our gratitude. Nevertheless, unknown G.I. G.I. Joe, first, as you were out of a great army, your true reward must always remain our shout of gratitude that day 20 years ago. Thank you, thank you, thank you in my name, in the name of all those who found you found still alive on that afternoon. Thank you in the name of the hundreds and hundreds of thousands who died before you came, but whose spirits were still prisoners in the limbo of that Dachau crematorium. They said G.I. Joe, they imagined he was chewing bubblegum when they first saw the first G.I. Joe come across. the, And then when they saw that the Nazi prison guards, they basically conquered the prison, and they had the prison guards, and once they found out who the SS people were, the American troops, we just, you know, went ahead and shot them. And they were saying, oh my gosh, that was uh, that's a little barbaric. The fucking concentration camp was fucking barbaric. So, summary justice, right? They went through all that fucking shit. And now that piece of shit that fucking tortured them, enslaved them, oppressed the shit out of them. Just because they were liberals, communists, Jewish. Just because they were homosexuals. Just because they were liberals. Just because they had liberal, left-leaning, communist beliefs. We should feed everybody. Everybody should eat. Like Jesus. That's why you're going to put them in. Jesus was Jewish. You would have put Jesus in the concentration camps? That's stupid. That's dumb. The GI's hes hesitation didn't last long. He retraced his steps, accompanied now by some 50-foot soldiers. Then there was a burst of shots from up on the watchtower. We threw ourselves to the ground, terrified again at the thought of a possible massacre. Lying thus face down in the dirt, we saw nothing of the advance of the Americans. One of the prisoners, in a sudden fit of madness, threw himself against the electrified fence. Trying to scale it, he was immediately electrocuted and stayed there, the last scarecrow. 
of our nightmare, his hands welded to the wires, his clothing singed black, his naked feet dangling. We started getting up one by one, even before the firing had stopped. The Americans were now almost within reach. On the other side of the moat, they had forced the SS men to come down from their watchtower and line up one behind the other, hands on their heads. The Sharivari, the Sharivari had now begun again, and already some of the GIs were throwing cigarettes to us, starting near fatal scrambles. We'll come back to that. The Day of the Americans. This is the gift. The gift of freedom, the gift of life, the gift of manhood, the gift of another chance. This is one of America's holy wars. This, according to Howard Zinn, this is one of Howard Zinn's holy wars. The Civil War, World War II, and the Revolution. And actually, he wrote that article saying we should imagine ways, peaceful ways, to get beyond war. So he was saying those are America's holy wars. Could we have done some things differently?